in today's class we shall be solving a problem on electrostatic pressure and for that we are considering a part of a hollow conductor like this this is a hollow conductor and this conductor is charged this conductor is charged like this and we want to find electrostatic pressure on the surface of this conductor for that what do you understand if we consider a gaussian surface if we consider a gaussian surface like this this gaussian surface is basically a cylindrical gaussian surface and as you understand the electric field lines exist only in outward direction hence what do you expect using gauss's law if sigma is surface stress density and area is a electric field lines are normal to the surface and what you can write using gauss's law that is the gauss's law so using this law flux is only due to the outer surface and outer surface area is a so ea is equal to sigma a by epsilon 0 so what do you understand electric field is equal to sigma by epsilon naught that is electric field now let us read the question a hollow charge conductor has a tiny hole cut into its surface so that the electric field in the hole is this sigma by epsilon not n cap so basically this electric field what we have got has got two contributors one due to this surface one due to this surface marked red and the other part is due to the unmarked portion what does it mean suppose i am just considering isolated portion of this surface and for that what do you expect using gauss's law electric field lines will be both outward and inward directions so again if we apply gauss's law like the previous case it will be flux will be due to both the surfaces flux will be due to both the surfaces and what do you expect simply e into 2a is equal to sigma a by epsilon not that is 
electric field is equal to sigma by two epsilon naught. This result is also known to us. Now the point is, we want to find the electric field in the tiny hole. How to proceed? If you want to find electric field in the tiny hole, for that, what we are doing? Let's make the hole. And if we consider in this tiny hole, electric field due to the rest of the portion is E, then what do you expect? So the contribution of electric field due to the rest of the portion is E dash, is E dash. And let us assume we really do not know the direction of E dash. So I'm just removing this arrow. So, Just out, uh, outside this tiny hole, contribution is E dash. And say so inside this tiny hole, the contribution is say E double dash. And now, if I consider this marked portion, if I consider this marked portion, this portion, and contribution of the marked portion is for the outward part, it is sigma by two epsilon naught, then n cap, and for the inward portion, the magnitude is same, sigma by two epsilon naught, but direction is inward, hence it should be minus epsilon. And what do you expect? Inside this hollow conductor, electric field is zero, Hence, what do you expect? Sigma by two epsilon naught minus n cap plus E double dash vector is equal to zero. Hence, E double dash vector is equal to sigma by two epsilon naught n cap. And for the outside part, for the outside part, what do you expect? Sigma by two epsilon naught n cap plus E does vector And total field outside is sigma by epsilon naught. We already calculated this using Gauss's law. Here is the result. So naturally, E dash is also equal to sigma by two epsilon naught n cap. So in equation one and two part, E double dash and E dash, contribution of E double dash and E dash 
is due to the rest of the portion of this hollow conductor. Rest of the portion means we have removed certain portion to create a tiny hole and the remaining portion except the whole portion. Okay. So the story line goes like if this whole portion is removed, what do you expect? Electric field, electric field just above the hole, electric field just above the hole Sigma by two epsilon not outside and just inside it is also sigma by two epsilon not n cap. So what do you expect due to the remaining portion? The corresponding field will be sigma by two epsilon not n cap. Now the interesting thing is. In this marked portion, charge is, so what we have concluded, we already derived this result, sigma by two epsilon naught, n cap is the field in the hole, because there should be some continuity of electric field just inside and outside of the hole. And that is why on the surface of the conductor, the field should be also sigma by two epsilon naught. Now we can use this result to find the electrostatic pressure. So charge on this red marked portion is sigma A and field due to the remaining portion is sigma by two epsilon naught. So that should be the force on the marked portion. So pressure corresponding electrostatic pressure is equal to force per area and it is equal to sigma square by two epsilon naught. So we can use this result to derive, we can use this result to solve charged soap bubble problems. And for that, we are considering this application, surface tension of a soap solution is T. There is a soap bubble of radius R, calculate the amount of charge that must be spread uniformly on the surface so that its radius becomes 2R. Atmospheric pressure is P0 and we are assuming air temperature inside the bubble remains constant. For that, we are considering a soap bubble. Initially, the soap bubble is uncharged. If atmospheric pressure is P0 and inside pressure is P, then what do you expect? Inside pressure try, tries to expand the bubble and atmospheric pressure and the surface tension is nullifying the inside pressure. Hence what you can write, P is equal to Rather P1, which is the first situation, P1 is equal to P0 plus 4T by R, where 4T by R is excess pressure. From the idea of surface tension, we understand this. And in the second situation, in addition to the pressure P1, what we are having? What we are having? Electrostatic pressure, sigma square by two epsilon naught, which is trying to expand the bubble. And as a result, the radius of the bubble increases. 
and now the new pressure becomes p2 instead of p1 now the new pressure becomes p2 so p2 and sigma square by 2 epsilon not there trying to expand it whereas p0 and surface tension force 40 by radius and now new radius is 2r they are trying to nullifying p2 and sigma square by 2 epsilon not so that way we can write p2 plus sigma square by 2 epsilon not is equal to p0 plus 40 divided by 2 r that is equation 2 and we are having additional condition assume that air temperature inside the bubble remains constant so how do we expect p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so that way pressure p2 the new pressure inside the bubble is equal to p1 then v1 by v2 is equal to p1 and then r1 by r2 whole q so p1 and new radius is double of the previous radius so it is 1 by 8 so p2 is equal to p1 by 8 okay so this would be our third equation p2 is equal to p1 by 8 Now, from equation 2, if we substitute P2 equal to P1 by 8, um, P2 equal to P1 by 8, okay, instead, let us write P2 equal to So instead, what we are doing, P2 equal to from equation 2, P0 plus 2T by R minus sigma square by 2 epsilon naught and say it is equation 4 so if i find p1 by p2 equation 1 divided by equation 4 so p1 by p2 is equal to 8 p1 by p2 is equal to 8 and RHS is equal to P0 plus forty by R divided by P0 plus 2T by R minus sigma square by 2 epsilon naught. So that way, what we are getting P0 plus 40 by R divided by 8 is equal to P0 plus. 2 t by r minus sigma square by 2 epsilon naught. Hence, sigma square
divided by two epsilon naught is equal to seven p naught by eight. 7p0 by 8 plus 2p by r minus p by 2r. So if you simplify, you can easily get this result. 7p0 by 8 plus 3t by 2r. So that way, what we are getting is sigma square is equal to 2 epsilon naught within bracket 7 p naught by 8 plus 3 t by 2 r. Okay. So it is equal to epsilon naught seven p naught by four plus three d by r. So now sigma square is known to us. So definitely, if sigma square is known, sigma is charge per unit area. So Q divided by surface area is 4 pi and new radius is 2 r okay 4 pi r square is sigma it is equal to epsilon naught 7 p naught by 4 plus 3t by r equal to the power half. So from this, definitely we can find q. So that way q is equal to sixteen pi. R square and then epsilon naught within bracket seven P naught by four plus 3 t by r full to the power half. And according to your need, you can further simplify this. Okay, so this result is very important. Thanks for watching.